Well, it's Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, and entering Jerusalem is the setting. What was going on in Jerusalem? What's the big deal? What what was making that crowd gather? What was the commotion? Well, it was Passover, and people were coming to the city for this great festival. We think Wisconsin and Milwaukee is the city of festivals. Well, it's nothing compared to this. It was a festival, a grand festival of Israel's independence and their nationhood. Think of it like the 4th of July with a religious twist in a land of growing political oppression. That's the mindset. That's the setting. That's the context. And it was in this setting that early, One morning, a commotion arose to the east of the city. There was this Galilean riding on a donkey, entering by what's known today as the Golden Gate into the city. He was the center of interest for a growing procession of villagers. And palm branches were waved and placed on his path. I remember a conversation I had with some Sunday school children. And I asked them, I said, why do you think Jesus rode a donkey for this triumphal entry? And one smart kid said, I guess a donkey had better mileage than a camel. (laughs) Kids, they they do say the darndest thing. Why not a camel? Camels are everywhere else, but you get more mileage on a donkey. Well, those palm branches, they were waved. They were placed in his path. Garments, as we know, were thrown down. Songs and shouts arose from the crowd. Hosanna! 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 What is Hosanna? It is a Hebrew word. And it means, please save. It can also be interpreted, save now. Save now. For many, our world is crying like that today. Save now, Lord, from the agony of some of the tough times that we're going through. We're like that crowd. We need to shout and sing, and we are. Hosanna, save now. Now, the crowd then, they did not have the benefit of hindsight like we do. If they had known as we do today in hindsight why Jesus came to Jerusalem, they would not be singing those songs of triumph. You see, they thought Jesus was coming to take over the state to win control of government. The prophets had said that the Messiah would come riding on a donkey. And so when these people saw Jesus riding the donkey and connecting a lot of dots that had been traveling around for two to three years during Jesus' ministry on earth, and then he rides a donkey, they're connecting the dots, and they're saying, this is it, this is the one. So when people saw Jesus doing this, they thought, He was coming to lead an uprising. They thought he would ride up to Herod's palace and would just take over the throne. That's what they thought. 
And then once that would happen, then he would say, Romans, get out of here. He would run them out of his newly established kingdom. Well, that's the dynamic that's going on biblically that has ramifications to how we live today and the situations in which we find ourselves. They saw in Jesus like a primary election candidate that gave them some kind of hope from their desperate situation. The waving of the palms, that was casting a vote. I'm with you. I'm with this. However, they were clueless. They were clueless as to what would happen and what it meant. And they were clueless as to what really mattered. And it was the particular kind of kingdom that Jesus was running for. Now, the crowd there, the, the crowd, it, it, they were partially right. Jesus was and is the Messiah. But they expected a Messiah on their terms. And that's where the rubber hits the road. We want God to do God's thing like we think it should be done. They wanted a revolutionary who would rule an earthly kingdom. But Jesus was about more than that. Because it is more than that that really matters. For as Jesus triumphantly enters Jerusalem, do we remember what it meant for him to come there this time? He'd been to Jerusalem before, but it was different this time. And that was the big surprise, the surprise agenda of what Jesus was about. It was uh, an excursion that was leading to a crucifixion come Friday. You see, Jesus didn't come to Jerusalem to sit on the throne. Jesus came to Jerusalem to hang on a cross. Kind of changes the perspective on things, doesn't it? That cross, that was his agenda. Because there's a remarkable strength that can be found in a particular kind of surrender and weakness. That was his agenda. And he said so to his disciples many times. And we reminded them of how the Son of Man must suffer and die. The, the Apostle Paul was very clear to that. When in the, the Philippians, Paul wrote, he humbled himself by becoming obedient even to death, even a death on a cross. Knowing that, as we know now, how can we sing hosannas in the face of the suffering that Christ would go through? How can we sing it in today's perplexing times? Well, we do, we can, and we will sing it that way because Jesus is suffering. It was necessary to be able to win our hearts. It's one thing to be forced to do something because there's a gun pointed at your head and another when a heart is opened up for you in love. A totally different kind of motivation. For we're motivated by essentially two things. By what we fear and by what we love. Hate and fear. 
Well, there is a Jerusalem, figuratively, in each of our lives here. There is the Jerusalem of our lives, and it is in the city, I would call, of inherited patterns and ways of just the way we do things. It is the dead weight of our habits, of our unreflective living, of our assumptions that life is the way I see it and no other way. For there is a city within us that really does cry for deliverance as the city did of Jesus' day. So the challenge for us as we enter into this holy week, taking us to next Sunday's celebration, do we dare to enter our Jerusalem as Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday? Will we open our hearts to the Lordship of Christ and allow what he was about to be what we are about? And to do all that we can to understand that, to grasp that, and to live for that. That is why we have a center, a new center, for Christian learning, leadership, and fellowship. To learn what Jesus was about. And from what we learned, to become leaders in our community. Leaders in this world that that good news of the gospel that we have learned, we lead in our communities and share that vision. And it is also a time where we just fellowship and have a good time together. Because God's people are a fun people. So, on Palm Sunday... 2024, the Christ comes. He comes riding passionately into our Jerusalem today, and we are again faced with the necessity to respond to the event. What am I going to say about that? It's frighteningly hard to realize that this crowd that shouted Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna also became the crowd when it didn't go their way they said crucify him. And even after that he went to the cross. And as you know he said Father, forgive them. Forgive them. Or shall we say, and I think this is where we are, we're not going to say crucify him, but we're going to shout out, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That is the choice that we make. He comes in the name of the Lord And in coming in the name of the Lord, what does that mean? It means that Jesus seeks to enter triumphantly when we discover and hear that God has not entered our lives to help us do our work, but he has entered our lives and he has called us to do his work. It's the challenge. Who's sitting on the throne of your life. And to be fully devoted followers of this King of Kings, this Lord of Lords. Welcome to the Christ of history and of today. Hope is among us. Hosanna. Loud Hosanna. Can you shout that? Ready. Hosanna. Hosanna. 
Loud Hosanna. Loud Hosanna. How did that feel? Wasn't that exciting? Great is his faithfulness. And God's people said, 